Hey guys, what's going on? Inception here and welcome to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, today is going to be a discussion video. I haven't really been doing too many discussion videos for FIFA this year because I'm mainly focused on the content side of things for YouTube. So it's not really important for me to mention a lot of things because I've kind of just like adapted and accepted a lot of things and just do content now, okay? Because I know that you guys have noticed that this year I haven't streamed at all. Right. I've been mainly focused on the YouTube channel and I'm going to explain all these things to you guys uh, and give my thoughts on how FIFA is right now. So with this team that you guys see here, this is my RTG account. I got very lucky on it because you guys know those like 50K pre preview packs. Um, I actually opened one of them and got Conte. Right. So with Conte, I was able to buy the players. I am not going to buy and sell these guys that you guys currently see. They are going to stay in my team forever now because I don't like having to work with the market constantly, right? You guys know that for the foot heroes, I actually ended up packing Cole. So he's the player that mainly plays in those side positions, especially for that 4-4-2 that we're using. Um, until I get Robbie Keane, which is the player that I definitely want for this team, and I feel like it would definitely complete it in very nice ways. Uh, until I get Robbie Keane, I do have to use Correa for now because the problem with using... Bernardo Silva is one of the strikers. He's great as one of the strikers for sure. But for the meta of the game, sometimes the weak foot um, is definitely a letdown for sure. The work rates is definitely not because I like the quick dribbling with him. It's definitely very nice. Uh, it's just a matter of the weak foot when he has to take certain strikes where it can be a letdown if I need to go one direction versus the other, especially when it's like under pressure. Robbie Keane would deal with most of it as the striker because he's just one of those guys this year. But he's like 400k right now. Um, so... Let's talk about why I haven't streamed this game this much, okay? So I haven't streamed the game this much this year because I, for yet another year, do not want to deal with whether or not my gameplay is going to be good or bad during the streams, right? Now, obviously, if I stream during the night times, I have a higher chance of my gameplay being good and playable. But the problem is, is that uh, Nick literally just sends me a message. I'm the best keeper mover in NA, which we're going to talk about that in a bit. Um, but I don't like this thing yet again for yet another year. It's been like 10 plus years of this where if I hop on during the daytime, it is most likely going to be awful to play. Very slow, very sluggish. If someone activates a custom tactic with pressure, you're attacking AI breaks. I can barely move, right? So that type of stuff is not something that I want to deal with, especially on stream, because I've been very like calm and like whatever nowadays, because I'm like kind of focused more, more on the content side of things. But it is something that is still to this day very annoying to deal with. But obviously you can still review the cards. You can still tell the base characteristics of each one because guys, to be honest, man, most of the cards, you can tell what they're like before using them. Like Fakir this year was the only card that I mentioned in the review before I even tried him where He's the type of card where I would actually do him on my main accounts because I saw that the way that the card was formatted with the Hunter chemistry style, and I was like, oh my goodness, this card has crazy potential, right? He's the only guy that I actually mentioned that for versus pretty much any other SBC that came out, right? Like you kind of have a really good idea of what the cards are like before using them. The main thing that you have to see is not even finishing, right? It's really not even finishing. The main thing is literally AI, what their defensive AI is like, what their attacking AI is like, that is the main thing. Because when it comes to shooting, right, you still need to work high percentage strike angles to score the majority of your goals, right? That's just like a big thing that I always tell people. Like sometimes I'll be reviewing a left mid and a right mid, and in a 4 4 2, guys, these guys don't often get involved with goals. Carrasco definitely does, honestly. Like, look, 25 games, eight goals, seven assists, right? But look at J. Cole right? 44 games, three goals, one assist. And then with Machis, it was the same thing. I think I scored like one goal with him and I had like three assists, right? So it's just kind of how it works for the play style. Like these are the types of cards I would mainly use in the side positions, right? But they don't always offer a goal. It doesn't necessarily mean they're terrible. Obviously, it'd be, get, it'd be better to have a higher goal contr contribution, but it is what it is, right? But yeah, that is one of the reasons why um, I haven't streamed this year because I don't want to deal with that. I dealt with that for years back in the day, and that used to be like a very stressful point in my life. So it's just not something that um, I want to deal with. But it's not just the gameplay situation. It is also a matter of uh, whether it's worth streaming from a gameplay and game mode perspective, which I don't think it is. I do think it is. 
for division rivals. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Maybe some of you guys may not agree with this, uh, but I think that the way that division rivals is formatted this year is the best possible way that it could be formatted from like, honestly, they did a better job than what I even anticipated, right? Uh, I'm only looking at it from like an individual perspective, not to the balance with everything else, right? The reason why I like it so much is because there is a very good balance of, and obviously there's a definitely a huge thing with like the amount of games played and grinding the amount of games played to get to the elite division. There's definitely a thing with that too, for sure. I'm not an idiot, right? But I do like the concept of people grinding to the elite division, right? only needing to get seven wins to get the rewards. I like that a lot because if you're the type of player that does not care about the SR in FIFA and you just want to get that reward and be done with it, it's awesome, right? Um, right now we're in division two because this is the new season. So they relegated everybody. So you can even see season two. This is my Road to Glory account, barely use it. But I played some games right now um, to see what's up with Machis and Again, very hard to get some shots with him because he's playing left mid, which is like the main areas that I see him being used in a 4-4-2, right? But I do like the way that Division Rivals is formatted. The rewards can definitely be argued against 100%. I'm definitely not going to go against you guys when it comes to that specifically. But I do like the format. And I always mention the format. This is the key word is format, okay? I just want you guys to remember that because I like the process of every single season. They relegate you a little bit. You go back up every week, you get your seven wins. Like you can just go one and four every single day and you can still get your rewards, right? So I like that concept a lot. The reason why Division Rivals sucks is not because of Division Rivals itself, but it is because of the balance around Division Rivals, right? So again, really like that EA does, uh, you know, the gameplay objectives, right? Where uh, they have a milestone objective, not crazy cards to be honest like I'll, I'll be honest they're not crazy cards but they're there for a very long time and they're there and they exist for you to just play something else that isn't division rivals and grind for a card that's different now are a lot of people going to do both of these cards let's be honest probably not they're not crazy cards but for me personally as a gamer i would actually play these game modes to unlock these two 100 so the milestone stuff i'm totally cool with even if the cards are not necessarily meta okay uh, even the stuff over here with the gameplay objective cards, like getting Bergwine, totally cool with this. You know, you're getting your objectives, whatever it is for your season pass, totally cool with this as well. The reason why I'm not cool with it in the grand scheme of things for FIFA in general, guys, okay, very key thing in general, is because we do not have an actual tournament mode, okay? I always mention to you guys in all of these years that the way that the World Cup game mode was formatted right you have your group stage you get your reward for qualifying through the group stage and then you get your reward for winning the whole thing that is the thing that fifa needs for it to reach that next point of actually being a very good video game i don't like the way that the game modes are formatted in fifa yet again even from a stream perspective yes you can play the elite division all day but as a gamer that wants to unlock thing through unlock things through playing the game that concept only exists through the menus not through actually playing the game okay because you hit a wall where you if you play division rivals you get your wins you're done there's literally no reason to play more games especially if you don't care about sr you guys know me i don't care about competitive fifa i just want to play the game for what it is and then move on from it okay and that concept for me does not exist because it doesn't have the tournament mode for you to get those rewards Honestly, they can cut the rewards in half from what the World's Cup used to give you, and I would still be content with it because there's a gameplay grind that is fun to do, okay? You guys know, man, foot champs, okay? Listen, I'm going to tell you guys something about foot champs. I know that your mindset is going to be looking at foot champs from a perspective of what it is right now and what we currently have, okay? I'm going to tell you guys yet again, I don't like foot champs. I don't like that it exists in FIFA. I never liked it when it was first added. Yes, it is better this year in regards to a more casual perspective, right? Playing your 20 games. 20 games is definitely less, which is great, okay? I, I understand, but I don't like this game mode existing because this game mode replaces the tournament mode. It really does, okay? Because Division Rivals should be your competitive playlist because if you play games like csgo or an overwatch they kind of have like a similar thing where 
obviously if you play a lot of games you will gain that sr eventually right sometimes you get stuck in a certain area so it's a little bit i would say less no, it's more strict than FIFA, I would say. Like FIFA, it's definitely easier for a player that's not so great to still hit the Elite Division after some time. In Overwatch, it's probably a little bit more complicated. But the competitive system should always exist like this. This, as the competitive mode, is fantastic, right? Foot champs should be the tournament mode. I know a lot of you guys are not going to agree with this, and I completely understand. I've never liked this game mode, ever, okay? It's so strange that for a lot of people, the qualifying part of foot champs is actually more complicated than actually playing in the game mode. Uh, I played foot champs uh, once this year, twice this year, went six and one for one, like super early in the game. And then I went for six and oh on the review account and I just like called it a day because guys, for my YouTube channel, it's honestly just not important to play. So it just doesn't make sense for me to do it because it's a waste of time unless I have like a free day where I can do all this kind of stuff. For instance, the 442 formation tactic video, that's in the Elite Division before the season reboot. Uh, and then it's also the Foot Champs games as well. So that was like a really good example of when I play regular FIFA to kind of get all that content, right? But it's only for formation and tactic stuff because the Road to Glory stuff is super whatever on my account, right? And, and it makes sense. It's, it's just not uh, what people look for the most for the YouTube channel. It's mostly like player reviews and bouncing between each one, right? Um, but yeah, Foot Champs I don't like. If I look at it from a perspective of what it is right now, yes, it is better than what it was in previous years. You know, you qualify, your games are more casual to play your 20 games. And honestly, if you lost every single game, the rewards are still sick, right? So in that regard, yes, Foot Champs is significantly better this year than it is in previous years. Although I do think it's a little bit strange to not have a 20 and 20 reward because the difference between 16 and four and 20 and 0 is the same, which is a little bit weird, but I understand what they're going for because they're taking a more casual approach to that type of stuff. If you go 16 and 0, EA's mindset is just like, okay, just stop playing the game, right? So I get it from a casual perspective, right? And I like, I, I like the concept a little bit, right? It's just that I don't like this game mode and I never will like this game mode. And as you guys know, man, elite division for division rivals is way more complicated than playing foot champs. But I like this competitive game mode more, especially with the way it's currently formatted, because you don't have to play too much of it. But if you want to and you want to get better at the game and you want to grind your SR, you can still do that against competent players. Right. So that's that's fine. OK, um, so, yeah, that with game modes. Like I said, with draft, I'm not interested in draft. Honestly, draft is completely done for me, um, especially this year. I played, I'll even show you guys the record, right? So I played three foot drafts and two of my foot drafts, I got disconnected. And you guys can actually see, right? 34 goals scored, nine goals conceded, right? In the amount of matches that we played. And I got disconnected twice. So it turned me off completely from playing it. But not only that, because the transfer market is set up a certain way nowadays where players are incredibly cheap. Um, the rewards before Foot Champs, in my opinion, was already as bad as it was with a normal market. It's going to be worse with a market this low, right? So it's just a mode that I don't care about. It's a mode that exists for EA to collect money in their pockets because FIFA points exist on it, right? Never agreed with... A game mode in a video game that has FIFA points in it for you to play. I've always said this. I understand why it kind of has it, of course, but it's trash. It exists for FIFA points mostly because you know that people are going to play it over opening packs a lot of the times, right? Because it's definitely not worth it in a coin perspective. Unless you're a content creator and you have to stream during the daytime, you're done your rivals games, you don't care about SR, so you go ahead and play uh, online draft, right? So yeah, it might come as a surprise to you guys what I think about division rivals, but honestly, I do like the game mode. I think it's great. Um, it's just that everything around it is trash for it. I don't talk about squad battles. I hate this game mode. It only exists for me to do objectives. So I'm not even going to comment on that. I don't like squad battles, right? You guys know this. Uh, for that, I don't mind it being in the game because it's for the casual guys. Like, I actually have a friend of mine whose brother literally only plays squad battles. And he actually spends money on the game. And that's fine. It's that, If that's the casual perspective, I'm totally cool with that. It's just not something that... Um, you know, I'd like to do myself personally, right? Okay, so that being said with the game modes, right? Let's talk about the gameplay. The gameplay is yet another reason, like I said earlier, why I don't stream this game consistently because you guys watch Nick stream sometimes. He plays during the daytime and his gameplay is rough literally every single day. 
And it is rough every single day. If you play this game during the daytime, as, at least for NA, it could be different for different continents and whatnot. Uh, I, I personally think it's going to be the same for you guys. I really do, okay? I think it's going to be the exact same format where if you play the game during the day, it's going to be awful to play. But if you play the night, you have a higher chance of being able to enjoy the game. There was actually a review that I did where honestly, I was flying through it. And someone was actually looking at my gameplay and they were like, how does your game look this fast, right? And here's the thing, guys. By default, with the Elgato, my gameplay is going to look faster by default. That's just how it works when I'm doing the recording and stuff. But I think it was... I'm looking at the cards here, and I can't remember which game was higher higher to play. I'm looking at the rule breakers and stuff. I don't think it was any of these guys. I cannot remember for the life of me which card it was. to. Oh, it was the Lewis Miller card. Lewis Miller, that's who it was. So the Lewis Miller review, guys, when I was checking him out in the midfield position, my gameplay that night was pretty decent to play, right? So the types of goals, the types of plays, the dribbles I was able to do, people were seeing it. They were like, oh my God, the gameplay looks nice. But they still say the same thing when my gameplay sucks during the daytime when I do reviews for that too, right? So it's very unfortunate. Again, you can still tell the base characteristics of a card even if the gameplay is rough. Like I said, guys, I've been dealing with it for like 10 plus years, so I still know the differences, of course. But it's just a matter of wanting to deal with it on a stream perspective, which honestly, I'm not, right? So that being said, with gameplay being rough, that is the thing, in my opinion, guys, that will make FIFA a garbage video game every single year. I genuinely think, and this is me taking base mechanics out of the equation completely. I'm looking at the game from a regular perspective, everything that's what I experience, right? The gameplay being inconsistent for yet another year is what makes FIFA a garbage video game, okay? Because people who, you know, watch FIFA or play FIFA, this is one of the things that people do not talk about enough about or a lot about because it's just a thing that like kind of brushes through their head in their mind it is dda scripting handicap momentum that's what that's what passes through their mind right but it's literally inconsistent gameplay most of the times so every single year guys we always get this thing where people say the patch made the game slower the patch did this the patch did this no okay no 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 FIFA's gameplay is inconsistent every single year. I do not want to see people saying that the patch is what caused the gameplay to be slow. No. No, that is not the case. And believe me and trust me from a guy who has, who has dealt with this for years and tried to research and try to fix this issue, who has gone to the studios to try to fix this issue three different occasions. Trust me when I tell you guys, okay, that your player's feeling like, like not ideal is completely because of the game's code. The game's code, whether it's a combination of server and code or just the game code, it is the worst game code you will ever see in your entire life, okay? Because back then in FIFA 15, when people used to think I was crazy talking about this, right? It was a thing, is, it was, it was a thing there as well. So by default, gameplay-wise, guys, FIFA sucks every single year because of that issue. Dealing with that, guys, is not a thing that any player, especially in 2020, one nowadays right we should this is not a thing that we should be dealing with it just isn't okay so that's something that you guys know i'm known for the guy who talks about inconsistent gameplay i don't care i have to let you guys know that it's garbage every year because of this main issue okay now let's say inconsistent gameplay did not exist okay let's say that the gameplay was at its best every single time the base mechanics of fifa's gameplay this year in my opinion is Probably the best it's been in years, okay? In years. But there are certain things that obviously, like, ruin it. Because uh, I even mentioned on the tweet uh, the other day that from a base mechanic perspective, because, guys, base FIFA mechanics and inconsistent gameplay are two different entities. I hate when people associate the two together. It does not work that way, okay? The base mechanics of FIFA this year is significantly better than what we've experienced in, in different years because the play style this year is to actually score football goals as much as possible, okay? And that, to me, is fantastic. Even when I watch you play in the elite division, a lot of it is very football-oriented goals. Yes, there are overpowered mechanics in the game that are absolutely ridiculous. I'm not going to say that there isn't. Um, some of the things, right, that I'm going to mention in regards to things that I feel like should be fixed gameplay-wise, right, is that I... Notice, okay, so if you play in the top tier of FIFA, this is where you notice the BS of how people play every single game, okay? 
I do not like the meta of park the bus counter through ball or do law passes. I literally faced people today three times in a row where that's all they did. No passing play on the floor, blah, blah, blah. They do that law pass because of how effective it is. I literally conceded a goal to Izak today from getting a ball he should not have gotten just because this guy did a random through ball and Izak stretches out his foot when my defender was standing there the entire time. No, the law passes. It was ridiculous that in that recent patch, they made them even more effective, which is, in which is insane to me, okay? No. Law passes should definitely be a thing in FIFA for obvious passes. I like law passes working for obvious passes, but the ones where it is not obvious at all and the players are positioned a certain way, you should not win them. And I even mentioned this to the gameplay devs and even still, they still freaking did a, a thing for the law passes because the way it works, guys, is that I can tell them that information, but they're literally like a month behind doing patch stuff and they and then they release it that's just how it works right so the law pass stuff the through ball pass stuff especially when you defend well that still annoys me okay it's and people score very undeserving goals because they go park the bus and they counter and then they score their goals in that way which just really sucks okay um i also believe and i still believe to this day that manual goalkeeping is absolute nonsense okay Manual goalkeeping should not be a thing in FIFA. I can't even hear this argument from people, to be honest with you guys, because here's the thing, man. Manual goalkeeping in FIFA. You can't have manual goalkeeping because your finishing is not perfect, okay? You can work a high percent strike as much as possible, and your player can still hit the post from a green time shot or miss the net entirely. So why does a manual goalkeeping mechanic exist where you go to the other side, and I shoot to the other side, and I, still, and I could still miss the net, right? Manual goalkeeping is fine to exist if your shots are with 100% shot accuracy from good angles. They are not, okay? So it is absolute nonsense, especially since you have to take timed finishing into consideration as well as looking at the goalkeeper. Like when you time finishing, you, when you're time finishing, you have to look at the animation of your player and when he's about to hit the ball, but you have to look at the goalkeeper at the same time. Nonsense. That's nonsense, okay? EA nowadays has this competitive switch thing, okay? So my suggestion is if you want to keep it in the game, be my guest, right? But this competitive master switch thing, right? This thing right here, manual goalkeeping should be one of the things. And you see how like all of these are defaulted to off? It should be defaulted to off for manual goalkeeping. It should be one of the options here and you need to have it turned off because the skill EA is not bailing someone out, right? For a potential bad defensive mistake. The skill is actually breaking down the attack. Now, don't get me wrong right now. There's a couple of stupid things here and there. But the skill EA, like I said, it is in breaking down the defense. Once you break down the defense, okay, and you work a high percent strike as much as possible, time finishing is okay. Well, you want to keep down your game? So be it, right? But having to look at manual goalkeeping in a game where people are parking the bus like crazy, your shot accuracy is not 100% from high percent strike angles, it does not make sense for it to be in the game. I I cannot, I know that this is one of the things that you're going to be like, arrogant, I guess, arrogant about this, ignor arrogant, I, one or the other. I, I can't even think about it right now, right? But I cannot even listen to an argument about, about uh, manual goalkeeping. It is single-handedly the stupidest thing ever, okay? So that needs to be part of the competitive master switch. Is there anything else? Uh, regular passes are trash. Regular passes are definitely trash. Uh, they are the most inconsistent thing in the world. Honestly, doing a driven cross across the pitch or doing a driven pass from a guy next to you is better than doing regular passes. The regular passes are awful. The bounce passes even sometimes are awful, but they're more consistent than regular passes. You guys saw from some of my reviews, I do a bounce pass and the guy barely has power behind it or whatever it is. The passes are so, so bad, okay? But everything else about the gameplay, guys, honestly, I actually like this year. I like that people focus more on football-oriented goals when they don't abuse the mechanics. Oh, oh my goodness, guys, how can I forget this other absolute horrible mechanic? EA, please nerf the corner tactic. I, I, like, FIFA analysts showed that, like, years ago, man. You know, not years ago, but he showed in the beginning of the year Oh my goodness, Are you guys gonna do anything about it? Like, if you guys don't know what it is, it's basically call the player short, pass it to the edge of the 18 yard box, cross a far post. If you have like meta players, especially, even if you don't have meta players, it's gonna be a goal most of the time. 
please EA do something about that mechanic because my goodness, you have to mark it from every single person. They get like they get this goal because it's overpowered. I don't know if you have to do like a defensive um, adjustment to block it or whatever it is, but it is so crazy that that's still a thing in FIFA. Honestly, it's <laughs> that that definitely needs to be in one of the patches soon because it's so annoying to have to block it every single time. Is it blockable? It is. I'm not going to say that it isn't. You have to use manual goalkeeper. You have to block the edge of the 18-yard box. It's blockable, but having to block it is just its just so stupid, man, it's, because people do it because it's overpowered, not because it's effect, like effective. Does that make sense? It's like one of the one of those things, right? So can't forget about those that corner tactic. Freaking ridiculous. But um, most of the other things, man, I like a lot. So obviously, in FIFA, you still get horrible deflections that go back to people. Sometimes the tackles are horrible. Most of it happens when the gameplay is bad. But from a base FIFA gameplay mechanic perspective, okay, without taking inconsistent gameplay into consideration, I still stand by that this is still one of my favorite FIFAs to actually play. It's just it can't be because of the inconsistent gameplay, okay? But the core base mechanics is nice. This is the first year, okay, where there needs to be four to five adjustments, maybe, right? And then everything else is cool. It sucks that everyone parks the bus because that's the default mechanic in the game, 100%, right? <gasps> Excuse me, it sucks that the gameplay is inconsistent, whatever, right? But if EA are smart and they were to adjust these four to five things, this would actually be the game that has the best gameplay in any FIFA, right? I'm being dead serious. Another problem, though, is, is that I feel like the meta this year, and this is a personal opinion because of play style and stuff, but I do think that the meta this year is very specific, okay? Very, very specific. Like, if you have 15, I can honestly use, like, players in different positions and it'd be fine. This year, man, I feel like it is so, so different because I literally played foot champ sometimes this year, where I was literally having trouble scoring opportunities. And then the moment I subbed on Mbappe, within five minutes, I scored a goal. Because, and, you know, that makes sense. Obviously, the top tier players are going to be, be a big difference. The thing that I don't like, though, is that I don't like how big of a difference it is. Does that make sense? Like, when you use some of these guys in the striker position, this year, guys, I mentioned super early into FIFA how the striker position is literally the most important area of the pitch this year. If you do not have good strikers that have a good balance between the two or just the one, I'm telling you guys, it is going to be so hard to play FIFA. It really is. Like this year with the strikers, especially 100%. But, you know, if you use the 4-4-2, most of the players will be as usable as possible. But you still, like I'm telling you, man, that's why when I did the Fakir review, the first thing I mentioned to you guys was that aggressive attacking AI that he has. That aggressive attacking AI was the most important thing. When I saw that, I'm like, this card is amazing. Foden has it as well, but Foden is not like Fakir with a four-star, four-star dribblings formatted a certain way, right? But that's why, I'm, that's why I was mentioning all those things to you. Generally speaking, guys, okay, um, I think this is the best FIFA we've had in the last few years, in my opinion, if we're going to be talking about the balance of game modes and FIFA. But me saying it's the best is undermining the statement a little bit because... It's still completely off, you know? But again, like I said, guys, from a base mechanic perspective for FIFA's gameplay, I do like it more than previous years. I, I, I genuinely do. I do think that some adjustments still need to be made. I still think that the game mode of the tournament mode needs to be added because if the tournament mode is added to FIFA, it'll literally be the best FIFA game of all time because the game modes, even if your gameplay is not up to par, the game modes will make it fun for you to play and grind. That's just how it works, man, okay? Oh, before I leave, EA, you guys got to figure out, especially when the gameplay is horrible. During the daytime, I feel like I can't even play the game, okay? EA, you guys got to figure out what you want to do with these pressure tactics, what you want to do with someone wasting the time, okay? You got to figure it out because it's so annoying that someone who honestly does not have the defensive skill or, not, or is not even that skilled... It's so annoying that when they activate a pressure tactic, you can it's, you basically have stopped a person from being able to play the game normally because it breaks attacking AI still, okay? It still breaks the attacking AI. And when your gameplay is rough, especially when it's rough, but you notice it even when it's good too. If the defense is putting pressure against your player, you guys have this composure thing. So I'm going to lose possession of the ball because someone activates this pressure for the whole time. No, that is not the skilled balance. These guys are not good defenders. You're making everybody a good defender because the pressure tactic is such a crazy thing, okay? 
It's insane. But like I said, guys, four to five things. I actually, I actually think that I mentioned the four to five things to you guys this year. Uh, I can't comment too much about the transfer market stuff. Don't get me wrong, for the review account, I have lost many coins on it, but I don't mind as much because obviously I get the revenue from the YouTube channel. I spend it on the coins to get the cards. No problem, right? And I, I have no issue with that personally, right? Especially since you guys support the channel so much. Um, but obviously the transfer market stuff and things dying, I don't know, man. It's weird because if you make coins to be able to get those cards for the low tier, mid tier, it's fine. It's just... I understand what people are saying when it comes to like the Mbappes and the Neymars costing as much as they do and you needing to be lucky and pack luck to get the cards more than it is a gameplay grind. So I do always hate and I will always hate that in FIFA's grind when it comes to, you know, you having certain cards, I will always hate that that grind comes more from the menus and also being lucky than it is from you actually grinding the game consistently. I will always hate that because I know that that will never change when it comes to FIFA. But generally speaking guys you guys have been absolutely incredible this year so far um i'm very grateful thankful that i can literally just do the player review content for you guys and just call it a day you know i don't have to stress and deal with inconsistent gameplay when it's not to par like you know at least i could take a break got get off hop on an hour later if it's still inconsistent but my brain is at least refreshed so i can come back and do the content again right at the very least the content on the youtube channel and the support has been incredible. I really do appreciate it. I just have this thing with me where I feel like I can do better every single year, but I can't because I don't play the game regularly enough. Review FIFA and regular FIFA for me, guys, is two different things because review FIFA allows me to test out and force certain characteristics out of a card for me to be able to get a solid consensus on the card for you guys without needing to play regular fifa as much as possible like when i reviewed the fakir card like i was mentioning reviewing the fact that he has aggressive attacking ai reviewing the fact that his left foot is crazy with the shot power shooting and finishing that he has the pace it's more possible to do that through a player review and doing review fifa rather than it is to play regular fifa that's just how it works okay analyzing where a player moves from a base characteristic all of that stuff for me is important and it's actually helpful because before I reviewed Fakir, I'm like, this is a card I'd probably do on my main account. That's the only card I said that about this year, okay? Before doing the before doing the actual review. But then when I actually saw that he had aggressive attacking AI in game, I was like, I'm sold. I'm literally sold. I just need the aggressive attacking AI because I know with shooting, I know what the way that it's formatted on a hunter, I know what his shooting is going to be like. It's going to be crazy, okay? That's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I really appreciate the support. You guys have been amazing this year. I have absolutely, you know zero to say about that you guys have been awesome uh i've been really enjoying just grinding out the content for you guys on the youtube channel again i wish i can do more uh with streams and stuff but it's just not something that that uh i can do myself but uh yeah maybe in the future it'll change we'll see man if i get the nighttime streams going maybe but the gameplay during the daytime nah be it's uh it's rough guys it's rough but uh yeah i'll see you guys for the content tomorrow if there is any Again, really appreciate the support you guys have shown the YouTube channel this year. You guys are awesome. I'll see you guys later. Peace out, dudes. Love you guys.